Good afternoon. We certainly meet in the most unusual places here in New York. Uh, very delighted to be here. Beneath the Second Avenue subway, something that we've been talking about for a very long time. But before we get started, I want to recognize some of the extraordinary leaders who are making this happen. And let me start with Jana Lieber, who's been with us leading the MTA for four years. Uh, a fellow visionary, someone that I work closely with, we speak all the time about the challenges, but also the opportunities afforded to us as we lead into the post-pandemic transportation world. Also, Congressman Adriano Espaillat, well, I've known you for a long time. And I don't know that we've ever had a conversation where you didn't mention, now we have to get down here and look at the summer. Uh, we have to get down there. So uh, your nagging has paid off. Okay. Uh, it's something that you're deeply passionate about. And I want to thank you for your leadership as we push for this second phase. But the queen of the first phase has to be the one and only Carolyn Maloney. Someone, uh, she, she and I lived together in Washington when I was a brand new member of Congress. And every morning, well, how do you think we're going to do with that Second Avenue subway? This is, this is a decade ago. Uh, so she has been pushing for this, and I want to thank her for thank friendship. You. And uh, I don't know if Jerry Nadler had a chance to come here. Is Jerry Nadler? He's upstairs. Okay, he's, he's, upstairs. he's upstairs. Jerry Nadler is on site, and uh, we'll be talking to him shortly. But another fellow champion. That's the kind of clout that we have needed and that we have in our nation's capital to help push for the federal funding that is now available to us. Also, at the local level, someone who is also dreams big and works really hard on behalf of her constituents, and that's our Manhattan Borough President, my great friend Gail Brewer has joined us. Yeah. Uh, Assembly Member yeah. Robert Rodriguez is here. Is he here? Yes, yeah, he's sir. back. Yeah. Okay. There you are. Okay. Uh, soon to give up the title, but to become uh, Secretary of State in my administration, so I'm very excited about that, but enjoying your final days as Assembly Member. Also, Al Taylor, Assembly Member, I believe, is here. Al, I don't have, uh, there you are. Hi, Al, I didn't see everybody. Great to see you. Uh, Senator Serrano. Senator Serrano, here. Okay, I should turn around, you're all next to me. Uh, and and uh, Senator-elect Cordell Clear is here. So thank Senator-elect uh, very soon. And also, Vincent Boudra, the uh, uh, City of New York President. Uh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. We got everybody. Okay. Just taking toll, taking uh, attendance here. <laughs> I've told, I've told New Yorkers that my That's vision good. for this state is bold, especially as we re envision the post pandemic world. And it's an opportunity for us to see what is out there. A lot of the untapped potential that has been beneath our streets for literally decades. And that's what brings us here today. Last Monday, I stood with my former colleagues in Congress on the White House lawn and witnessed history being made. President Joe Biden, with the stroke of a pen, ensured that there would be transformational, historic investments in infrastructure that have been long overdue since the days when I was a 20-something-year-old staffer working for Senator Moynihan, who used to talk about these projects when he served on the Infrastructure Committee. The dreams have always been there. But the money never matched the dreams. That era is now over, and I'm very proud of that, that we have this opportunity. And with the $23 billion in new grant opportunities for transit expansion, projects like the Phase 2 of the 2nd Avenue subway are no longer going to be talked about on a drawing board, but actually accomplished. And we are very, very anxious and pressing the administration hard to grant our request which is in uh, the Department of Transportation to include the construction of three new subway stations at the 106th Street, 116th Street, and 125th Street here in Harlem. Yes. As you can see, we are ready to go. Now, this is 50 years old. We were ready 50 years ago. Uh, but on the theory of better late than never, I want to thank President Biden and our congressional delegation, those who had the courage to vote for this infrastructure bill, because there will come a time when they look back and be able to show grandkids and great-grandkids of what they were able to accomplish while we are still in the throes of a pandemic. The importance of this phase cannot be underestimated. We saw what happened with phase one. Again, Carolyn Maloney pressing for this under the Biden administration. And what happened there was a regrowth of an area, a catalyst for economic development. And so we know the positive impacts in a local community when you work on projects like those, and it's stunning. It's a different experience altogether for our commuters who sometimes feel a little beaten down by the experience. And it is our opportunity to also affect their quality of lives and to give them more certainty and safety 
and just a better experience by the physical environment around them. So now that phase one is done, phase two is on the books, and let's get that done because I can't wait to get it to phase two and phase three, and three and four. Let's get all the way down to phase four. Let's get those done. Let's get all the way down to Houston Street. Let's, let's make those connections. Let's dream big, but let's get phase two done first. And what will this do? As you know, this started, the vision started in Harlem back in the 20s, and they were so close. And all of a sudden, something happened that was unforeseen, which was the Great Depression. That sidetracked again. They were ready to go in 1939, and World War II slowed it down. Then they were ready to go in the 1970s, and the financial crisis of, this, of that era slowed it down again. So finally, in 2021, and hopefully approvals very soon will allow us to announce the start of it in 2022. We'll be able to get done now what for generations people have only talked about and dreamed about. So these three new stations will assist the people of Harlem for starts. This is the most transit-dependent community in the city of New York. 70% of residents use public transportation to get to work versus the citywide average of 55%. And the East Harlem population has grown. This is great. It's grown 14% since the last census, so more people are living here. So the goal is to make sure that all Harlemites have what we call access and transportation equity. And what we're talking about in particular is access to the transit opportunities that get them connected to jobs, to education, and to opportunities. And that has been missing for far too long. Also. They can get up to jobs, places like Westchester. They could actually go to Connecticut, but I'm not encouraging that. I'm saying stay, keep your jobs right here. It'll also alleviate the overcrowding on the Lexington Avenue lines, which currently carry, and this is astounding, 1.3 million passengers a day. And that's more riders than San Francisco, Chicago, and Boston combined. So take that. Uh, so this pandemic has given us a lot of challenges, but also reminded us of the disparities that have existed in so many areas, and now is the time to right those wrongs of the past. And all of our New Yorkers deserve a 21st century infrastructure experience. And what does this experience look like? Well, it's not going to look like this, my friends. It's going to be bright. It's going to be beautiful, uplifting, Wi-Fi connections, accessibility for people with disabilities, so important, escalators, ADA accessible. Uh, it's going to be high ceilings. It's going to be welcoming all the things that you sometimes don't feel right now when you're in our system. So overall, we're rethinking the transit experience from Penn Station to new investments in our subways and buses, making our systems accessible, safe, and reliable, and making sure that we protect the overall health of our community. So this has been a tremendous collaborative effort I love working with my partners in Washington. I've worked with them literally as one of, one of them for a long time. I know how hard they work. But to be able to get this over the finish line uh, during my administration is going to be so exciting. And I cannot wait to get started. So ladies and gentlemen, next stop, 125th Street. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jan Lieber, who again has been temporarily the acting CEO. I hope to make that permanent. Let's get that done, legislature. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing working with them for many, many years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Jana Leader, Lieber. Uh, Governor, I, I have to thank you and all the other electeds who are here for joining us. This project has been waiting for a couple of years to have uh, the kind of championing that you, supported by Representative Aspayat and others, have seen. We waited for, we had the EIS was done three years ago. Three years ago. Uh, we, we had our paperwork in two years ago. So it's time, we're very much hoping that with your leadership and your encouragement and all of the work that's coming from uh, Representative Espaillat and the rest of our delegation that we can see it. Um, you, you talked about the benefits of this project. I, I really can't uh, gainsay any of that. Um, but this is a community that has waited too long. Transit equity is the center of your vision of rebuilding transportation, and we stand ready. We believe that if we got the right signals from Washington, we could be under construction in less than a year. Moving this thing forward, we're going to do it differently, smartly, and um, hopefully at, uh, more efficiently than some of the projects in the past. But the main thing is jobs and getting the project done so the people of East Harlem and Central Harlem can start to benefit. I know you, it is a shot in the arm for this effort. 
that you have come today and that you have uh, stated so clearly your vision for this project's completion. So thank you to everybody who has joined in this today. Thanks. Congressman Espiat. Of course. Well, I'm excited to be back here. I feel like I live here, Governor. Uh, uh, this is a great project. Uh, I'm so excited about it uh, because it's not just an East Harlem, Harlem project. And of course, there are so many needs. This is a transportation desert right here in 2nd Avenue. And you can see the numbers, even with pedestrian accidents, of people that have to walk from all the way on the east end of the Manhattan to the Lexington Avenue line. Uh, but not only is this a transportation desert, but this is a regional project. I see it as a regional project. I see this project as connecting Harlem, the heart of ha Harlem, 125th Street, to the rest of the world, really, uh, to uh, the Metro North stations that lead to Westchester County, to Rockland County and other counties. By bus, just like 10, 15 minutes away, you could connect to LaGuardia Airport and that new investment that we're making in LaGuardia Airport. And eventually, we'll connect west on the Hudson River to future water transportation over by the Columbia University campus. So this is an exciting project. But what makes it even more exciting is that this will be a job creator. And so we have President Beaudreau here from City College we're working on a Transportation Infrastructure Institute with Charlie Rangel uh, to make sure that we train young people for the jobs that will be produced by projects just like this one, creating prevailing wage jobs for young people and folks from this neighborhood. That's the exciting part yes, about it. Yes. That is, that's, it's going to lift this community and it's going to connect it to the rest of the world. And, and we, the money is there. We worked very hard. In fact, Jano knows we were on the phone very often during the pandemic. We didn't want the MTA going bankrupt. And so we fought hard to put the money there on the table for the MTA to continue to move forward. As you know, the MTA runs on a ridership formula. Ridership collapsed during the pandemic. They were in dire straits. And we were able to come in with the money so the system continued to move forward. And projects like this one were not compromised. And now that we passed this tremendous bipartisan bill, transportation infrastructure, projects like the New Starts project within transportation has the money. They have the money to make this happen. Now, we got to get to the engineering phase. That's our next phase. Once we cross that hurdle, this project is on its tracks, literally. And so we want to make sure that happens. This is a, a signature project for New York City. I can't see what's more important and more emblematic of New York City than the subway system, right? And to say that we're building a new line now, today, it's an incredible statement to make about New York City. And so I'm very excited, Governor. You know that I, I bother you a lot. I, you should see what I do to the Secretary of Transportation, Mr. <laughs> Buttigieg. You know, I'm on speed dial with him. We want this going to the... Um, engineering phase as quickly as possible. The money is there, and we're going to make this happen. Thank you so much. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. I want to thank our visionary governor for not only wanting to build up to 125th Street, she's talking about doing phases three and four all the way down to the tip of Manhattan and going into Brooklyn. Now, I say that's a really strong determination, and having her leadership behind this project is going to get it moving. And I thank my colleagues, all of them in government, and especially my friend SBI, uh, for championing and supporting the Second Avenue subway. And of course, all of our, it takes a village. These, these things don't happen without your borough president, your state senator, your assemblyman working together to push these things forward. We, we just toured uh, phase two of the Second Avenue subway. And thanks in a large part to the passing of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which sent billions of dollars to New York City for much needed infrastructure, we're going to get this thing funded and moving. We're expanding one of the biggest and best 
works, uh, public works systems or projects ever, and that is the New York City subway system. What a great success. In 2019, daily ridership was 5.5 million people a day. Uh, this project is very personal to me, as I used to represent East Harlem, and we talked about building it then when I was on the city council. And when I went to Congress, I had 10 things I wanted to accomplish, and the Second Avenue subway was the most unrealistic. Most people laughed. Oh, it'll never happen. It's been planned forever. Uh, but we opened it up. We opened it up recently, uh, several years ago, and it was the only subway that has been built, not in New York City, not in New York State, but in the entire country, the entire country since I've been in Congress. And this will be the second phase built then. This, this subway was first proposed in 1920, the year that women got the right to vote. And I stand here now with our first woman governor of New York, and they say it takes a woman to get things done. So thank you, Governor, for getting behind it. It took nearly two decades of hard work, dedication, and dogged persistence to build phase one. We don't intend to wait that long on phase two because it's already half built. We have the MTA behind it, and we're going to get the funding behind it. But as we toured the tunnels today, all I could think about was the light at the end of the tunnel finally opening this track up uh, to serve the people, the quality of life, build the economy, provide the jobs. And we're not going to stop until we fully build the Second Avenue subway, not only to 125th Street, but down to the tip of Manhattan and in, into Brooklyn. Sometimes it takes vision and decades of persistence to get big things done. So today I'd like to uh, sneak in a good word for seniority, experience, and never, ever giving up, because it's going to take that kind of grit to get this into the reality of people's lives. So I thank everyone here. You're all part of making this happen. Thank you.